This Mobile Geeks video is powered by ASUS. Hey guys, Sasha from Mobile Geeks here. We're in the new computer mall here in Taiping, next to the Digital Plaza. It is massive, eight floors, and what I'm going to show you right now is basically the second floor, which is all about you know the, the flagship store of the huge Taiwanese brands, and has a little bit to do with gaming. And we're basically going to do a little bit of a walkthrough. So um, let's check it out. Finally, um, pretty much uh, the number one on the Taiwanese market. Asus or Asus, you know, originally it was pronounced Asus. I just can't get rid of it because, just to let you know, um, the Asus Tech Group um, that was just a combination of Pegatron and Asus right now. So it's like Pegasus. Pegatron is an ODM. They're also building um, for Apple the iPhone and the iPad. I'm going to show you something really interesting because uh, over here they show you right underneath their lo uh, slogan, it's such an incredible. They're going to show you how they build on the Zen watch. So this is the original Zen watch over here. Next to this is the Vivo watch, which is more of a fitness tracker. And what I would love to show you is um, the process of building a Zen watch until the first prototype um, to um, the final product. So what you can see here, these are all the different components that they're using on the Zen watch. And once again, if you're building a new hardware, uh, hardware uh, product, make sure to a prototype. Prototype at least once a week. So these are all the different steps it took Asus to finally then um, build the Zen watch. Actually, I also have a Zen watch, but now I'm, I'm wearing the, um, the um, LG watch Urbane because of the battery life. Um, so this is the final product then of the Zen watch. Right next to it, so what, what's on display over here, these are all the Nemo pads, all the tablets, headphones, Zen phones, lots of accessory within this box, and of course, also a little kind of living room area. So you can sit down over here, there's an Asus Vivo PC, and um, they're also doing presentations in here, which is kind of nice. You know, just, come on, it just costs right through this. Um, Republic of Gamer. It's very, very popular in China. This is their gaming brand. Um, so for all the hardcore gamers, you know, this is um, where you get accessories. This so this is a 4K, 32 inch. Mm. How much is it? Roughly about 1300 US dollars. But you know what I really love about this? It's a non-glossy screen. How cool is this? Absolutely beautiful. And basically the reanimation of the EPC of the network. So these are the ASUS EVO X205. They launched this during EFA back in September. Um, it's really, really cheap. What a beautiful base on Intel Atom. Um, 1366 by 768, 11.6 inch display. Beautiful colors over here. And I think this one should cost about 190 US dollars, 190 euros. Over to the 10 inch versions. So, here are the two 100 Xi. Um, they're still not available outside of Taiwan, but especially I'm waiting for the T90 Xi. They also have um, the T300 Xi on the other side. So, this is like a two in one, right? So, you can just. Um, ugh, I don't want to break it. Maybe there's a release button. No, just, just trust me. It's a two in one, so you can also use it as a tablet. They're glued together. Yeah. I'm waiting for the T90 Xi because that's an 8.9 inch display with a little keyboard. It almost looks like a new PC. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Another display for the Vivo PC. This is something um, that is really cool for um, having in your living room. This gives you a little bit of an idea about the portfolio of ASUS right now and how a flagship store in Taiwan looks like. Um, I just saw something on the other side, and that's Lenovo, and we're going to head over there right now. Right next to ASUS is Lenovo, and um, they also have some of their name um, Let me just take you over here. This is um, actually when we tested um, the original um, yoga tablet. 
the small one was one of the most beautiful Android tablets at this time. What I really like about this, first of all, it was the battery life. We squeezed 16 hours of battery life out of the first generation. But I also love this little stand here, right? So whether you want to hold it in a kind of tablet mode or you're going to use it here as um, in this kind of stand mode. But there's also a third mode. It's just, you know, using it like this and just combining it with maybe with the keyboard. Right next to this is the Yoga Tablet 210, this one here. And they also have the solution with the keyboard. But they have an even bigger one, and that's the Lenovo Yoga Tablet 2 Pro. It's this one here. 13 inch Quad HD IPS display. That means a resolution of uh, 2560 by 1440. Uh, Absolutely stunning screen. 20,000 new time one dollars. That almost translates into, no, oh, oh Jesus, it's way over 600 US dollars. Besides that, of course, you can also get the latest ThinkPads. You can also get all the other. Oh, look at this. I almost forgot about this. Of course, it also has a little bit of a projector on the side. All right, so you can also use this tablet and just stream and just get rid of the projector and just stream straight out of the tablet. Now I want to show you a little bit about gaming. Right next to Lenovo is Razer and they have a great gaming setup. So, a computer mall that has A4 and you're coming over here with your kids, right? And you just want to have time for yourself to just go shopping, just drop in here at the Razer stand or the Razer shop. Because you can see, they can play for free. All the latest uh, gaming notebooks, but not only the gaming notebooks, they also have proper stations here. So using the latest gaming hardware, so you have Razer headsets, uh, Razer, Razer keyboards, Razer mouses, and then you can just uh, play along here. Plus, of course, they also have um, some high-end PCs for gaming. But look at those fellows here. They are playing all day long. Look at, look at him. He's so into it. Uh, so once again, this is like a theme park for geeks. And Razer is definitely one of the most iconic brands when it comes to gaming. And it's great to see, you know, what kind of flagship store they built into this mall here. When you're not into computing, and you maybe just came over from the Maker's Fair, which is just happening next door right now until tomorrow, I guess, um, you might be interested in 3D printing. So we have here are a bunch of different 3D printers, not only to show, actually, the people what you can do with 3D printing, how good they became, how good the quality of, not only of the printers are, how big they became, and what kind of huge products you can print, but also, of course, you know, how this actually translates into a final product. And over here, they're showcasing just, you know, how in detail they can print out of different components, right? That's quite interesting. This is not the only um, showcase for 3D printing here in this mall. There's another one on the third or the fourth floor, but I would love to check out the Acer shop right now. Acer, they were once the number one on the Taiwanese market. They dropped a little bit, had some problems with the CEO, are restructuring the whole company right now. I truly believe that they are really back and kicking because um, in terms of their product line, in terms of portfolio, they're really trying out some new things. And I would love to show you the ASR Revo. Um, there's another picky So the Revo one is a small little um, desktop PC. Oh, double G. Um, you see that? So this is a special oh, Hello Kitty version. They, they announced this for the first time about half a year ago. So. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if you can buy this anywhere else in the world. Um, as you see, it's an, based on an Intel CM2957. You has one terabyte of uh, one terabyte hard disk in the end, and four gigabyte RAM, and also comes with uh, six terabytes of um, cloud storage. But what I also like here is um, the Switch series, and this tells me a little bit about how Acer changed recently. Um, so. 
Back in 2014, I've been to the launch event in New York for the Acer Switch 10. This is a proper two-in-one, originally launched only with a 1366 by 768 resolution, but now it came out with a 1080p. But this is the successor here. So this is the Switch 10e. See that? It costs roughly about 400 US dollars. As I said, it's um, it's a two-in-one, so you can also use it as a tablet. Has a full Windows based on Intel Atom um, SoC. Really nice product. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the good old network days. Um, next to Acer is Sony, and I think we should check out their flagship store. MSI, another Taiwanese company. Um, actually, this is the very first MSI store that I know here in this mall. Uh, is this the official MSI logo? A uh, mascot, not a logo. Of course, the logo. Once again, like the Razer store, this is all about gaming. Look at this proper setup here with the three screens. If you are into racing, you know what? I bet you can kill some hours in this store. But I would love to show you something. It's a gaming notebook here, the GS32M. Um, so what's the cool about this laptop is, first of all, it's just an ordinary laptop. But it comes with a docking station and they squeezed in um, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970M with 4 gigabytes DDR5 RAM. So um, if you still want to keep a proper notebook and you don't want to go for a full PC in your home, but you want to have graphic performance like a full PC, right? This is a really, really cool setup. Can't tell you anything about the pricing right now. No, actually I can, because it's here. <laughs> this is 75,000. 900 which is about two and a half thousand US dollars so if you want to spend two and a half thousand US dollars on a laptop forget about the MacBook just get a real one with a fantastic graphic cards in there so MSI they were actually the first one to ever do this and right now I don't even know if there's any other company doing anything that comes close to this but finally you know what after we squeezed MSI into this we're gonna head over to Sony. Yo. I'm a Sony fanboy. There's no doubt about this. I grew up with Sony. My first Walkman came from Sony. So um, this is the Sony Xperia Z3. Unfortunately, you still haven't launched a Z4 over here. I'm a little bit disappointed, Sony. Hey, listen, seriously, I'm really, really disappointed that uh, you don't bring um, the Z4 to the international market because you can do this. And I think Sony really needs to deliver. Um, there are not so many brand and um, companies out there with an image like Sony, which all stands for design, it all stands for you know, great product and good quality. Um, this is the flagship store here in, in the small. So, for example, they, they're, they're showcasing the smartwatch 3 over here, um, which is an Android Wear smartwatch, a beautiful one. comes with all kinds of um, different uh, wristbands and um, you have a bunch of they're bringing back the Walkman, right? Like in the MP3 version of it. I'm not sure if we really need this. Right? So it has a kind of high-res audio, which is supposed to give you a you know, special experience uh, when you're listening to music. And I love the music here. Lots of accessories and some beautiful screens. Um, Sony Bravia, uh, they're using the Triluminous technology. Actually, this is something that they also brought to um, their handset and their tablet. It's so beautiful devices. Um, I was close to buy one, but I did. I bought something from Korea. <laughs> so this is a, the Sony flagship store. Um, what I would like to show you, and I think we should just integrate this into this clip here, is um, what's going to happen if your heart this crashes, or uh, think about um, you have a fire in your apartment or in your house and you're leaving a hard disk behind or you can see and it just comes out half melted. There are some companies out there here and they're, they're all over this area, I know like from three stores, um, that are doing HDD data recovery. So if you have a broken hard disk, you can, you can bring your hard disk to one of their stores and then they're gonna rescue the data. What's interesting is, look, they, they have a little bit of a lap there. So this is how it would this is how it would look like 
by while they're working on your hard disk and trying to rescue your data. Uh, look at this. No, no, no. This is what I call it. You can actually see that they disassembled the whole hard disk and trying everything, you know what, to finally bring it back. So I wonder about this Western Digital Law, but if this is a uh, the sub company of Western Digital just can't tell you. But this is the second floor. I would love to take you to the third floor right now because it's gonna get really geeky. Third floor, this is all about camera technology. All the iconic brands are over here. Canon in the back, Nikon. Actually, I bought my first Nikon at DSLR. Uh, that was a D5100, so they have stored here. And they also have some drones. Um, Hakuba, Hakuba is building professional gear for photographers. Talking about professional gears, talking about accessories. Look at this store. So depending on what kind of lens you're carrying, Right. You need a proper suitcase, maybe you want to come here. You know what? They have it all. Look at here with the thick foam. All right, so everything is secured. They have all the different lenses. I don't know. Pretty much everything a professional photographer needs. But you know what? I just would love to walk around with you guys and to show you how this floor looks like. Because um, this is not only about um, the huge brands and the accessories, um, it also takes you a little bit down the history lane, a memory lane, um, because right in the middle of it, there's a cafe. And around the cafe, they built a little museum. So, this is a camera museum. Look at this. So they have all kinds of old cameras. Look, this is a beautiful Minolta here. And right next to it, they have Polaroids from the 70s. These were the first Polaroid cameras from the 70s. What a beautiful idea to be in a mall um, on a floor that is full of you know, photography and technology, having a, a camera museum around a cafe. And look at this, look at this teacup. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So let's move on, let's see what else we can get here. Sony is of course here. Fuji film is here. Oh my god, look at this one here. Look, look at those cameras. That is amazing. I think this was just one, one more example why I love to live here in Taipei and uh, I just love to go to these computer malls, these electronic malls, and to see, you know, what's new. We have no idea what they're showing. Oh, 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 oh. We need, I need to show you something. Come on. It's great technology. Actually, the first time I saw this um, was about a year ago, a Lutro. It was Lutro camera technology, which um, gives you the chance to refocus in the, um, in the post processing. And, um, so, the very, very original one, the very first one, was this one here. Now they put this technology into a real camera. So let me show you what you can do with it. Give me one second. So over here we have a sample picture. Uh, see, this is all blurry right now. Let's focus on her. And now let's focus on her. And what about this? So this is something that the Lutro Ilum can do. Costs roughly about 1300 US dollars and uh, just gives you the chance, a uh, professional photographer, the chance to refocus um, a picture in the post-processing. Uh, we're gonna head over to the third, no, actually we are on the uh, third floor. We're gonna head over to the fourth floor because I also need to show you the gigabyte area. It's gonna be amazing. Talking about gaming, we are here at the Gigabyte flagship store. Uh, I'm not sure if it's with the Gigabyte flagship store because they're also showing ours, which is um, the kind of high-end brand in terms of high-end PCs. But I would love to show you around because once again, you can just hang out here and play the latest games with some proper hardware. So look at those guys. Again, this is all for free. Right? This is a theme park for Look at this special desk here. They have this amazing 
chairs, uh, they're getting the latest gear, great headsets, great keyboards, and great screens, and of course powerful PCs. There's another one. Actually, they're teaming up with the ESR. I think it's a local um, eSports league. Those guys are lining up to play here this, this, this drive club racing game. Look at this. Uh, this is what I need at home. Definitely. No, I don't. Because you know what? It just uh, I would never get out of this. This is, by the way, the Red Bull race track in Austria. I just saw this by um, the very, very last corner that goes on to start finish line. This is this is how much I love racing. I can tell you each and every corner on every, pretty much every race. So yeah, this is um, the Gigabyte flagship store for the ESR League. And um, one last thing that you will also find here on the sixth floor. This is all about comic characters. This is a Marvel store. And uh, let's say Marvel. What's, what, what's the top it's Marvel. It's Marvel. Ma you know what? Marvel is actually a semiconductor company. <laughs> so look at this. Um, you have Alien vs Predator, Tony Stark from Iron Man, the Mandarin from Iron Man. Look how good they are. Just absolutely unbelievable. The quality of those. This is Alfred from Batman. And Bruce Wayne right next to it. And we have all kinds of Iron Mans. So these are the different ones from Iron Man 3. And very, very important, we have the Hulk. And look at this. Hello, McFly. Somebody at home? Marty McFly from Back to the Future. A bunch of little Iron Mans. Those are very, very popular here in Taiwan. Um, but my favorite one is actually here. Inside of this one because um, they have the T700 from the Terminator and they also have the T600 and a bunch of other robots. This isn't the only store to show all of this. They have like five or six stores like this and I, I want to take you over to this side because um, how is this called? Speed track racing or something? I've had a Carrera track set up. Um, look at this. This is massive. It's a, it's a four lane one and you can just play along here. Actually, this was a safety car. Um, let's, let's walk around a bit. Um, by the way, here is the... The GBT-1, it's the Gundam base, Taipei, or the Gundam base Taiwan number one. A uh, Gundam is, these are Japanese robots. Uh, oh, it's, I think it's also anime. Look at this projection here on the floor. See that? Okay, let's walk along. And then we have uh, nano blocks. Which is a little bit like Lego, but they also have collectibles. They even have a model of the Type E 101 here. That's beautiful. I would love to show you something else. If you ever wanted, you're buying an IC, um, an IC buggy, and of course, you know, as soon as you're using it outside, right, it always gets dirty, and you don't want to clean it anymore. Set up your own off-road track in your living room. By something like this. <laughs> How cool is that? Right. So I've never seen anything like this. Actually, you have to pay uh, 150 NTs for about 10 rounds. And last but not least, I need to take you two more stores that I need to show you. Um, Tamiya is basically the most iconic Japanese brand when it comes to models, to RC car models. My first RC car, actually I was doing it semi-professional. I could, um, I was doing it when I was like 13 or 14 years old. I was doing racing with it. This is a Honda Monkey. I always wanted to get a Honda Monkey, but I got a Honda Dash, Dax with a 50cc engine. There was also a 70cc version. This is also with a 50cc engine. Beautiful little scooter. And last but not least, I need to show you my favorite. 
guys this is massive. Um, first of all, we have all these different Star Wars figures here. Um, look, we have the Green Lantern. So all these DC superheroes, we have Flash. Uh, who else is here? Once again, Boba Fett, with some accessories, Darth Vader. Here's the Hulk. The Avengers are here. But look at this. Lightsaber chopsticks. Can it get any better? Trust me guys, I'm so gonna get them. I so need them, I so want them. Without them, my life won't be complete. To make your life more complete, I think you should visit us over here in Taipei. Come over to the Computer Hall Mall. Uh, if you have any questions regarding this, just leave us a comment down below and I hope you enjoyed. I'm Sasha from Mobile Geeks, here from Taipei, Taiwan. Thank you so much for watching, bye.